RCB. Every year at the start of the IPL, we sit and ask ourselves the same question. Can it be this year for RCB? Their fans always turn out in large numbers. They are deeply passionate. There isn't a fan base like RCB in franchise cricket anywhere in the world. So this year, can the players deliver to the fans? Well, the fans almost have a right to expect given their support. So let's go down and see what we've got with RCB. And almost inevitably, all talk of RCB starts with Virat Kohli. And the good thing for RCB fans is not just that he had a fabulous IPL last year, he scored 639 runs, he was striking over 140, but that he's put those couple of difficult years behind him. I mean, I remember there was one year, Virat would come out to bat and I'd say, it's not fair. Virat cannot keep getting out like this. So that phase with Kohli is gone. He scored runs in Test cricket. That World Cup was really, India was about Virat Kohli. So he's in fantastic form. All that is fine. What state of mind is he entering the IPL in? He's missed a Test series. Virat Kohli doesn't like to miss series. I know people will talk about 21, they'll talk about this one. But he's such a passionate player that he wants to come and play. But he didn't play five test matches. I don't know how much he's hit a cricket ball in this time. So what state of mind is Virat Kohli turning up to play for RCB? The passion and the work ethic is never an issue with Virat Kohli. And just seeing the form he was in before he took that break, I'd be very surprised if he doesn't have another big season. You always think 2016 when you think of Virat Kohli. So temper your expectations. Pretend 2016 didn't happen because that happens once in a lifetime. Can he get that partnership going with Faf? Last year, they put on 950 runs almost batting together. And that was one of the big pluses for RCB. What kind of form is Faf in? He had a middling year. He had some good scores towards the end of the SA20. He started to look in form again. He then went and played that strange T10 tournament. When you come towards retirement, you play everything, don't you? And didn't have a great time. I'm not even looking at what he did in T20. But yes, Faf comes back every year, a year older. Never ever shot on fitness. If he has a season like he did last year, it'll be absolutely wow for RCB. Because I think there's two big reasons why that top six this year is looking one of the most intimidating top sixes. Yes, I know Raj Rajat Patidar is back and I think he'll play that middling role. But Cameron Green comes back. He comes at number three. There's been a lot of talk about what the Cameron Green trade achieved. Primarily, it allowed the Mumbai Indians to get Hardik Pandya into the squad. But for Mumbai Indians, he was fabulous. Always good for at least two overs. And alongside him is that other Aussie who, who just cannot put a foot wrong on the cricket field. Glenn Maxwell is going through one of the most purple patches of his career. Whether it's 50 overs cricket, whether it's 20 overs cricket. If Maxwell temperamentally can handle himself, then he can be part of a really big season for RCB. So number three, Cameron Green. I'm still thinking Maxwell number five because I think Patidar can come in at number four. He's got to shake what happened in the test matches behind him. He only made one mistake and that often was his last. And he's got to stop thinking, will I ever play test cricket again? Because he's got a fantastic future in this white ball game too. And I've said it before, it will not leave my mind what Virat Kohli said after he got that 100 at the Eden Gardens against LSG. And he said, if this fellow is in form, you cannot bowl to him. He just came out all the way to talk to me about that before the presentation. And I thought, wow, Virat Kohli must really rate Rajat Patidar. So if he can be in form at four, then you've got that top five. And then our friend comes in at number six. In recent times, seen more on Crick Bus than on a cricket field. But he did okay in the Vijay Hazare Trophy. One thing you can be sure of Dinesh Karthik is his preparation will be spot on. He, in his mind, he will be very clear about what he wants. And if he can go back to being the finisher he was a couple of years ago, then that top six is going to intimidate everybody. And I say that for a particular reason. When you're playing at Chinnaswamy, much like when you're playing at 1K Day, you have to outscore the opposition. That's what Mumbai Indians did last year. And that is what RCB have to do because it's one of the most difficult places to bowl in. So this top six has to consistently outscore everybody else. There's only one issue with this. How do they play when they play on slower tracks? 
I'll put out that number because you must. Virat Kohli's strike rate against pace versus his strike rate against spin. If I know Virat Kohli well enough and I've known him well enough over the years, the one thing he'll be looking forward to doing in this year's IPL is telling the selectors, put those numbers aside, I am Virat Kohli. You don't go to an ICC World Cup event without me. And if you're talking about maybe leaving me aside from your planning for the T20 World Cup, come watch me play in the IPL. So, Virat Kohli's got a point to prove and I want to see how he plays against spin because that's been talked about so much. So there you have the top six. So far, everything fine, wonderful, powerful, everything good about RCB. What next? You're going to play in Lucknow, you're going to play in Kolkata. Gautam Gambhir has gone back there. You get an idea of the tracks over there. You go, I don't know what the tracks in Jaipur are going to be like. You're going to play in Chennai. What do you have in terms of spin? They traded out Shahbaz, they traded in Mayank Dagar. Little bit of batting in there, little bit of spin bowling in there. But it's not really a huge difference between those two. And this Karan Sharma, he's been around for a while. He's not set the IPL on fire for a while. He's a good cricketer, but he's not set the IPL on fire. And then apart from that, you've got the leg spin of Himanshu Sharma. You've got to have uh, Glenn Maxwell bowling a lot more. So spin is a factor, definite factor for RCB in this year's tournament. And then pace. RCB went and bought every fast bowler on the horizon. It was almost like a Bangalore software company picking up every engineer they could see around and saying, come work for us. So who do they have? Um, <laughs> let's see if I remember all of them. Alzari Joseph, Lockie Ferguson, Tom Curran, Reese Topley, Mohammad Siraj, Akash Deep, Vishak Vijay Kumar, Manoj Bhange, I think there's one more I'm missing somewhere. Yash Dayal as well. Nine fast bowlers. You can only pick one of those four overseas players and maybe two India players. My favorite pick has always been Reese Topley because I think it gives you wickets up front with the new ball. So I'm going with Reese Topley or Alzari Joseph. But they also need support at the death. How much can Siraj do? Take wickets with the new ball, come back and bowl at the death. They need Lockie Ferguson as well. That's going to be a big selection conundrum for them. Do they go with the death skills of Lockie Ferguson, even though he's also gone at about 11 and over in recent times? Or do they go with Reese Topley's skills at the top? So that's something for them, for them to worry about. So I see them going with two Indian quicks and a third uh, overseas quick because Cameron Green will give them a couple of overs. That leaves us with the impact sub because I'm a little worried about the batting after number six. My impact sub is always going to be a batter. It's either Mahipa Lomroor or Anuj Rawat. What that will also do is bring in the left-hander because there is no left-hander in the top six. So there you are, that is the RCB side. I think they might struggle a little bit with the bowling and that's why I'll come back to what I started off with. For RCB to win this year, they have to use the power of that top six to annihilate everybody else. The other thing that RCB need to do is break this jinx of playing at the Chinnaswamy. We keep going back to 2016, that great year for RCB. But thereafter, every time they play at, uh, at Chinnaswamy, they don't qualify. Three years, the IPL moved out of Chinnaswamy in the Gulf, in Mumbai, part in India, part in the Gulf in those years from 2021, 22, they qualified each time. 23, they come back, they didn't qualify. So the one thing that RCB will have to do this year is what the Mumbai Indians do at the 1K day. Just blast the opposition out and make that home a fortress, see? I got that word out too. Yes, so RCB, how are they going to do this year? Yeah, some issues, some problems, but that's true of every single franchise. Lots of strength, the odd issue. I won't be surprised at all if RCB make the playoffs this year.